In this video, we're going to do a quick walkthrough of some of the new features of Lightburn for node editing. Um, so quickly, the built-in shapes in Lightburn are what we would call primitives. Um, they exist and understand that they are a circle or a square or an ellipse or whatever. Um, in order to edit these, uh, if I go to node edit mode, nothing shows up here. Um, in order to edit these shapes, I have to convert them first into something that is editable. Uh, this goes for text as well. If I created a string um, and try to node edit this, I can't do it. You have to take these shapes <coughs> and convert to path first uh, because that turns them into uh, lines and curves and so on with editable points. Um, so you can quickly do this with more than one shape at a time. I can select both of these, for example, and say convert to path. And now these are editable shapes as well. And you can see I can grab the points and move them around. So among the changes that have happened recently, if I go to node edit mode, um, hovering over a point and hitting the D key will delete that point. Hovering over a line and hitting the D key will delete the line, and it breaks the shape. Uh, when you delete a point, if you're working with a closed shape, it keeps the shape closed. If you are deleting a line, it just removes the line and leaves all of the other pieces intact. <clears throat> if I delete a point from the end of an existing open curve like this one, um, it will delete this and the other line that was connected to it because there's nowhere for it to go. Um, I'm going to delete this line. Um, you can also uh, hit the I key to insert a point along an existing line. So if I hit I here, for example, I can extend this shape if I want to. Um, again, hitting D over an existing point deletes the point. If you hit S over a corner vertex like this, hitting S will smooth that point and it turns the lines on either side of it into smooth lines and exposes their control points so that you can move them around. Um, if I hit S over an existing line, it converts the line into a smooth line but it leaves it intact, it leaves the shape alone so that I can move these control handles but they the this point wasn't smoothed for me to begin with. It was just that the line was turned into a smooth line. Um, if I hover over this one and hit S, even though these lines on either side of it were already smooth, um, it makes this point a smooth point, and you can see that the point turns into a circle, and that means that these two control handles are now locked to each other. They're always going to be in a straight and continuous line like this. So this is a smooth point, um, and it means that any line traveling through that point will be smooth and continuous. If I hold, or if I hit the C key over this point, you can see that it turns into a small square, and that means that these two control handles are now not linked anymore, and this is called a cusp. Um, it is a sharp corner of a spline, and so I can uh, make a sharp corner with lines or smooth curves going into it. Um, again, hitting S turns it into a smooth point, hitting C turns it into a corner point or a cusp. Um, all of this is, of course, undoable, redoable, and so on and so on and so on. Um, I'm going to delete this line and I'm going to show you something else now. So, um, if I create a line, if I use the pen tool and I create a line from an existing point, um, Lightburn will automatically snap to existing points, but it doesn't do anything intelligent with that yet. Um, however, when you're in node editing mode, um, if I drag this point and it snaps to an existing shape, when I let go, Lightburn welds those two things together or connects them. It's like using the auto join tool. So if you edit auto join selected shapes, that's exactly what's happening when I drag <coughs> two points together and snap them. So you can see now this has become one continuous shape. And I can do the same thing with this point. If I bring this over here, 
it snaps, and those are now one point. So it's one closed shape. So if you want to create uh, multiple shapes and connect them together, this is a great way to do it. So I'm going to create a circle, duplicate the circle and move it over here. Uh, take both of these shapes, convert them to paths so that I can edit them. Delete those two curves by hitting the D key and these two as well. And I'm going to use the pen tool to just draw a line here, draw another line here, and then drag these to snap them together. And I've now made a continuous closed shape. And if I preview this, you can see that it is a solid shape um, because if it wasn't, the scan wouldn't work. I've also added uh, what's called perforation mode. So if you do work with paper um, or card, or things like that, where you want to uh, create folding lines, um, you could do it previously by using just a low power cut, <clears throat> but it's probably easier to use a perforation. So I'm going to set this to cut two millimeters and skip, let's say one meter, one millimeter, just so you can see them apart, tell them apart. Um, if I preview this, you see uh, Lightburn turns this continuous line into a dashed line, and this is actually what's going to get sent to the laser. If I show the traversal moves, you can see all the little red traversals in between. The nice thing about having Lightburn do this for you is that it's still planned properly as a path or a curve. So if I put uh, two or three shapes inside, other shapes, or around other shapes and so on. So all of these are set to use that perforation mode. If you look at the order of these, Lightburn is going to cut the inside shapes first and then cut the outer shape. And even though this is not a continue or not a closed shape when it's finished, because it's a closed shape here, Lightburn treats it as such and will plan it accordingly. Another useful new feature is uh, fill mode, sorry, uh, flood fill mode. If you have a laser that is relatively slow or you are creating something like a picture frame that has scanned details on the outside but nothing on the inside. So uh, let's do, let me create some circles here. paste them into this frame. So this is obviously terrible. You would never do this, but that's okay. So I'm going to set this to scan. Now, on a normal system, Lightburn will scan left to right, uh, all the way from the bottom to the top. Now these traversal moves are the ones shown in red, and you can see we've got a lot of traversal here um, and relatively little cutting happening um, because the laser is scanning all the way across from left to right and back again uh, over this shape that's got a lot of empty space in the middle. For a laser that moves very quickly, this is probably not an issue unless you're doing something quite large. For slower systems, diode-based lasers, things like that, this would be quite a problem and would uh, add an awful lot to your cutting time. So. Lightburn now has what's called flood fill scanning. If I enable that and then show the preview, even if I turn on traversal moves, you can see there's very little in terms of traversal happening here. And the reason for that is <coughs> Lightburn is scanning back and forth across these things. And here it's skipping over and filling this area because these things are close enough. There's a threshold that it uses. Uh, to decide whether or not two things are close enough to warrant keeping them together in one continuous move or not. And so it's going to scan up to the top and then come down the bottom or down the side, sorry, and then it'll go and fill in the last few details that it missed. Um, if I increase the speed of this cut to say 200 <clears throat> and rerun that preview, now these things are close enough that it's going to catch them all in one go. Um, because the laser is moving faster, Lightburn knows that it's quicker probably to jump across this gap and keep going. 
than it would be to change direction and go back later. Um, if I set this slower down to say 50 millimeters a second, now very few of these are going to be filled in all at once. And you can see um, it's going to skip past those and then go and fill them in on the way back. So laser fill mode is useful for filling in shapes that have large areas of white space where you want to avoid traversing around, uh, traversing across the white space. If you have a laser that moves fairly quickly, I wouldn't recommend using this unless you time it and make sure that it is actually faster than just using a standard scan. Um, <clears throat> you might be surprised at how often it ends up being slower if you have a quick laser.